Um, I think the a simple way to explain what Heroes of the Storm is is that it's um, an amalgamation of all of a lot of famous uh, characters and heroes from various Blizzard IP universes, and they all come together and they kind of battle it out in these different realms. Um, and the the game has its own story. Um, we just released a, an update on uh, on the the game's history, the game's like a background, the, the lore to the game. Well, there's these different uh, universes that are basically come together and each of the, the realms, the universes have like a source of power and there's a kind of a, an owner of that power, kind of a, a realm lord kind of thing and it has its own story. But within that, there are all of these different heroes and notable characters from like Starcraft, Warcraft, um, you know, all the different Blizzard IPs. So it's kind of like a culmination of everything that Blizzard has made. Um, so you see like the Lost Vikings, for example, they're from... Uh, a very like one of the early games that Blizzard's ever made. So it's taking all of like Blizzard culture and and all of the fun things that from each of the games that Blizzard has made and putting them into one game. Um, it it's a really great team play oriented game. So it's a it's it's a, a MOBA. It's a like online battle multiplayer online battle arena and. Uh, what makes it different is uh, a bunch of different things, but among them, the two, a couple of the most notable ones are that we have uh, a many, many different maps in the game, and each of the maps play differently. Um, some of them are objective focused, some of them are team fight focused. Um, and then as a core tenant of the game, it's really focused on coordinated team play. Um, so there's a lot of things that happen in, in each of the, the games that you play where the players have to come together and work on a specific goal. There's a lot of things that happen in each of the maps, like uh, in one of the maps, Battlefield of Eternity, there are two giant immortals that spawn at specific times, and the teams have to come and fight over them. Um, and whoever wins that has the support of this giant immortal, and it goes through the map, um, destroying objectives and helping them push to the opponent's core. There's another map called... Um, um, Dragonshire, and in that in that map, there are two objective points that spawn at specific times. Uh, the teams have to stand on those points and and convert them to their side. And then once the both of the points are converted, uh, there's an altar that spawns, and they can summon a dragon knight, and they can inhabit this this giant dragon knight, and they can go and destroy objectives and move towards the opponent's core. So there's things like that. Each map is different, um, very different dynamics. Some of them are very large with three lanes. Some of them are small with two lanes. Oh, yeah. So uh, over the last, uh, so DreamHack proper, where we have three days of uh, the back, it's a like bracket stage of our, like uh, culmination of our phase one. So we have two phases in the year. It's a six month, roughly six month period where we have uh, about 10 weeks of league play um, where all the teams are playing against each other. We have eight teams in four different territories, so it's 32 teams. Um, they're playing each other. Um, in the middle of that, we have two international LAN events that are called our Western and Eastern Clash. So um, the Western Clash, we have uh, teams from the West, and the Eastern Clash, we have teams from uh, Korea and China, Taiwan. Um, they play each other, um, and that's kind of more of an exhibition tournament. Um, then they come back after five weeks of league play, they do the, they do the clash, then they play another five weeks, and then um, we do a playoffs. And that qualifies the teams to this event. Um, so we have, uh, you know, a small number of teams from each territory, um, and then we gave um, we gave an extra slot at this event to the the region that won the international land event. So uh, for the Eastern Clash, we had Korea. Western Clash, we had Europe. So they they received an extra uh, team uh, slot to attend here. So we have three European teams, two North American teams. Uh, three Korean teams and two Chinese teams. And then we have um, two additional teams from uh, our non-league region. So for um, our non-league regions are uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Southeast, uh, Southeast Asia, um, Taiwan, um, and Latin America. And so for basically what we did was we created two additional LAN events um, called the Intercontinental and Horizon Clash. And so the Intercontinental is a clash between the top teams from um, Australia, New Zealand, and Latin America. And then we have one for Taiwan and Korea, or Taiwan and um, Southeast Asia. Um, that's called the Horizon Clash. So uh, each of those four territories, those they clash against each other. They play against each other. And then one representative team comes 
uh, to this event. So we have a total of 12 teams. Um, so for this event, um, Australia and New Zealand won from the Intercontinental, um, and then um, Taiwan won from the uh, Taiwan uh, Southeast Asia clash. So, um, so this is basically a culmination of the first phase. Uh, so we have all the best teams from uh, all of the different territories, and they're playing for uh, a total of like $250,000. Um, there's been kind of a shift, I think, like uh, at one point, like China was like uh, one of the top territories uh, with teams that performed the best. Uh, Europe's kind of been like one of the eminent regions. Um, the game gets updated very often, like the game team releases lots of content, lots of uh, balance updates and stuff. And I think um, right now, like this particular team is doing exceptionally well. They understand the meta very well. Um, uh, Korea has historically over the last like two years performed pretty well. Korea and Europe. So we create a lot of content, um, like whether it's like written editorial or video content. Um, we also do a lot of social content. So it's like engaging with our audience and our community through like news updates, things like that. Lots of lots of content about the players, about the teams, and a lot of them can be some of it's educational. Like we do top five plays videos, which is showing off like these are the top five plays from the week. We also do things like the Oracle series where we kind of do a behind the scenes kind of follow cam where you can see the players in their kind of natural habitat doing their own thing. You get to know the players that way. So uh, with well, the game itself, um, mm. I, I know that the, the game team looks at um, what the community feels and what they say and they incorporate that into you know their plans. So the game team does the game team works with our professional players sometimes too, like to get feedback on new features or new heroes. Um, you know, sometimes we'll get information on like, hey, this is a new update that's coming. Like, what do you guys think about it? Here's like some, here's how it works kind of thing. But from the general community standpoint as well, they get feedback all the time, um, especially when they do, before they release it on a live server, they release it in public test. Mm -hmm. And so they get a lot of kind of data that way too. So last year we launched Twitch Cheer for the first time. And it was like the brand new program. We had never done anything like that before and it performed exceptionally well. Um, so that was a really pleasant surprise. Um, so we made a bunch of improvements and we just launched it again um, a couple, like a week ago, week and a half ago. Um, it's doing quite well. We're really happy with that. Um, and so it's basically a program where our audience online can, can um, cheer through Twitch platform and they can get emotes and they can get in-game uh, items uh, for cheering. Um, so basically fans are cheering for their favorite teams. Um, we also just launched this, this drops program uh, a couple of days ago where you can watch the broadcast and earn items in game. Um, so we're, we're basically just trying new things and seeing how they perform. Um, we're looking to continue to grow. Um, our player base has been growing and our viewership's growing. Um, you know, we're getting interest from um, new potential sponsors for our, our, our teams that aren't currently sponsored. So we're looking at growing that. We're looking at um, how do we grow the number of LAN events that we do we have, or how do we create more um, wow moments within the program for our players, how to create more opportunities for them to be successful and grow, you know, whether that's, you know, continuing through, um, you know, playing on the team or supporting their existing orgs through other support roles. So. Um, and the game team has a lot of cool content that they're uh, planning to put out this year as well. Um, so the game's going to continue to evolve and grow. So I'm really, it's really exciting. Oh, it's pretty awesome. Honestly, like, uh, I love, I love being a part of this. Like, if you see, if you sit down and watch in the live audience area, it's, it's pretty exciting. Like, um, you see the fan, you hear the fans cheering. Um, the casters are, are really excited. It's fun hearing them. It's fun watching the plays. Um, it's really great.